Let's watch Fox News liberal Jessica Tarlov absolutely burying Trump for his disgusting Madison Square Garden rally with plenty of thinly veiled racism on the forefront and the usual misinformation we see with Trump rallies as well. We've covered both the openers and Trump's speech himself yesterday, so I thought getting a bit of the response could be pretty insightful for us to look at also. Well, there's evidence in the polling certainly that's come out in the last 24 to 48 hours that it is working for her and in terms of early voting as well. Gen Z voting is almost at the 2020 levels and we're not even through early voting. So there's a lot of good signs for all of that. So I wanted to start here because I thought this was an important point to touch on as well. Gen Z is turning out in astronomical numbers already. Mail-in voting has been massive also. I think 43 million people have voted early, like already. And from mail-in tallies, Democrats are building sort of nice cushions in some states Early voting typically tends to favor, favor Democrats, so it seems like the closing messages from Kamala's campaign are hitting in stride, while you see the campaign from Trump floundering at all levels from what should be easily avoidable errors that only set him further back, but I guess we'll have to wait and see how it bears out on election day. I think that it is absolutely crazy to try to make this about not having a good sense of humor about Tony Hinchcliffe's joke. So the bulwark just reported before we got. On. I love that. That's a, that's my bulwark. favorite. Go ahead. Okay, Mark Caputo, who is a reputable reporter. We what? It doesn't matter. Either way, this has been confirmed that he originally was going to do a joke where he called Kamala the c word, and the campaign saw that and they asked him to take it out, which he complied with, and that indicates that they saw his joke list. I think it was a deplorable joke. For me personally, I've never understood how like doing racism but making the tone funny means it's okay when you're punching down on a marginalized or oppressed group especially for their race I mean even their gender anything like that sexuality I don't find the humor in that and the person who is of that group that's being talked about probably doesn't either however I do understand that large groups of people do enjoy comedy like this I understand comedy like this does exist so I think set and setting is what really matters and it was a strategic misstep for the Trump campaign, in my opinion, what makes this newsworthy, as newsworthy as it is, is how deplorable it is, especially to be at a Trump presidential rally. The fact that this is what you want to project to your base, that this is the message that you want to put across. And it also goes along with other rhetoric Trump has used, calling immigrants garbage just days prior, saying that other countries were dumping their garbage into America, speaking on immigrants. And if you don't think they saw the joke list and approved this, I mean, you're kidding yourself. They absolutely okayed the joke and said, go ahead. So that's why I think that rightfully, they should be receiving the backlash that they are. And it's very clear that harm was done. And you know that because Republicans came out right away flipping out about this. Rick Scott posting Anthony Desposito, who is a congressman, um, in Suffolk County, immediately said, absolutely not, this Puerto Ricans are great, he's Puerto Rican himself. Marco Rubio came out, he was trying to defend the larger message, but he said Puerto Ricans are good people. And the Kamala Harris campaign is reporting that they haven't seen something breakthrough like this comment has okay. yet in the campaign. They're talking about Bad Bunny. But you realize this is to cover up the fact that they're calling everybody Nazis. No, well, Come also, on. No, it's not. You want to talk about what? that because can, that makes can, us seem insane. You did not even address that. The fact Here, that I your side you should, is no, calling everybody I, Hitler every, and Nazis, every, and you're choosing everybody. to talk about a joke. No, I, you this are is better what I than say. that. No, every show I say, I don't want to hear about Hitler unless we're talking about Hitler. This was not about 1930s Germany. But you did Fair. have Stephen Miller stand up there and say, America is for Americans only. Mm -hmm. okay. That is the kind of rhetoric that does echo the 1930s. Well, there were comments just like that. America is for Americans. There was this anti-immigrant rhetoric about them stealing the country, committing crimes, etc., calling Puerto Rico garbage, Dr. Phil slamming DEI, Tucker Carlson calling a black woman low IQ off nothing just because, right? These are demonstrable things to be opening your rally with. It echoes sentiments from the 1930s and it's something that shouldn't have a place in American politics. And Republicans have instead decided to create this boogeyman of Democrats calling Trump Hitler, even though they can't point to one elected Democrat who has called Trump Hitler, as a way to kind of distract from their own incendiary, racist, bigoted rhetoric that has became normalized for them to make on this campaign. Look at the clip on CNN of the Republican talking to Mehdi Hassan, for example, right? And it's our one chance this November to rid this from our political sphere once and for all. 
and just walk away November 5th. 